Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice trigonometric equation. We have cosine of 3x plus cosine of 2x equals 3 minus cosine of x. So, I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to be using two formulas. Hopefully you are familiar with the triple angle formula for cosine and the double angle formula. There are three formulas for cosine of 2x, but I want to use the one that contains cosine only because I want to write everything in terms of cosine. In other words, powers of cosine, okay? So let's go ahead and add these up. And when we add these two equation, equations, we're, we're going to get cosine 3x plus cosine 2x, which is what we have on the left-hand side. And that should equal 4 cosine cubed x plus 2 cosine squared x minus 3 cosine x minus 1. And as you know from our equation, it's uh, this is equal to 3 minus cosine of x, right? Now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 plus 1 minus 2 cosine x. But I'm going to write the square first. So plus 2 cosine squared minus 2 cosine x minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 equals 0. Now you can go ahead and replace cosine x with something like a c. And then you get 4c cubed plus 2c squared minus 2c, or not 2c, hopefully you see what I see, minus 4 equals 0. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, hey, do we use the cubic formula, you know, or any other method? No. You know why? Because this equation is factorable. And that's just amazing. Let's go ahead and group it. So we're going to put these two together. And then these two together. Make sense? So 4c cubed minus 4. We can take out a 4, write this as c cubed minus 1. And then 2c is a common factor here, and c minus 1. Obviously, c cubed minus 1 is a difference of 2 cubes, and it's divisible by c minus 1. So we can go ahead and factor it as c minus 1 times c squared plus c plus 1. And then 2c times c minus 1 equals 0. So c minus 1 is a factor, and the other factor comes from 4 times this, which is 4c squared plus 4c plus 4, and the other factor is going to come from here, plus 2c. And of course, we can kind of combine them and write this as 6c, but let's do it on the, the next line. Let's take another step here. 4c squared plus 6c plus 4. Okay, so far so good. Now, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and eliminate the extra factor. So this is going to become 2t, 2t, 2c squared plus 3c plus 2 equals 0. Okay. Now, we get two factors. One of them is a quadratic. Let's start with the linear one, which is easy to solve, by the way. c minus 1 equals 0 gives us c equals 1. But what is c? c is cosine x. So cosine x equals 1 is going to be our first solution, and we're going to talk about this in detail. And the other solutions are going to be coming from the quadratic. If you use the quadratic formula, c becomes negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4ac, which is 16. Uh-oh, we got complex solutions, non-real complex solutions. So these are going to be like plus minus root 7i divided by 4. So how do you solve an equation that's whose cosine is equal to a complex number like this. Negative root 3 plus 7, negative 3 plus root 7i over 4. <laughs> I can't talk today. So to be able to solve it, you can actually use an identity uh, such as this one. And this comes from Euler's formula, e to the ix plus e to the negative ix divided by 2. And then you can definitely call this one something like t. This is going to be 1 over t, so on and so forth. And you'll get a quadratic in t, and then you can kind of use the logarithms and solve for x. But that's going to be very painful, but I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you guys, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's, the, that's how we can find the complex solution. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Cosine x equals 1. What does that give us, right? That should be fairly simple. If you think about it, the unit circle, right, on the unit circle, cosine is found on the x-axis. 
So where cosine is 1, we're actually right here, which is at 0. So 0 degrees or 0 radians is going to give us 1. But wait a minute, is 0 the only solution? Nope, because this is periodic. You can just add 2 pi. In other words, x can be any multiple of 2 pi. So we can basically write this as 2 pi n, where n is an integer. All right? So 0 is a solution, 2 pi is a solution, as well as negative 2 pi, and so on and so forth. You see, all these are solutions, and that's pretty much it, right, with the first method. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because I think the second method is pretty interesting, right? Hopefully you noticed uh, what I noticed. Let's continue with the second method, and then I'm going to show you a graph, okay? So my second method is basically uses an important rule about sine and cosine. First, let's put all the cosines on the same side. By the way, this problem could also be solved a little differently. Maybe I'll talk about that too. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Maybe it's not going to work, but at least I'll mention it. So add cosine x to both sides, which makes sense. Obviously, if you have variables, you want to put them on the same side and then possibly get a 0 on the right hand side. In this case, it's not 0. But suppose we had 0 instead of the 3, we could solve this problem using some identities, such as there's something called sum to product formula, so something like cosine of a plus cosine of b, which could apply to these two things. And then the, obviously their average is going to come up, which is 2x, and then that's in the middle, so this should be factorable. But in the case of 3, uh, this is not very helpful as far as I know. I haven't tried it, but you can definitely try it. Anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. Cosine is bounded, which means it's bounded from below and bounded from above. In other words, cosine of any angle is always between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive. But of course, provided that alpha is real. We're kind of dealing with the real solutions here. Complex solutions, you already know how to deal with them. And they're not going to come out of here. But since cosine of any angle is less than or equal to 1, the maximum cosine can be is 1. So this can't exceed 1, right? Think about it. This can't exceed 1, this can't exceed 1, and this can't exceed 1. So their sum cannot exceed 3, but their sum is 3. So each of these must be 1. Make sense? Uh-oh. We kind of got the same thing, cosine x equals 1, with like the first method, but we also got extra things, such as cosine of 3x equals 1. Let's take a look at what it means. If cosine 3x is equal to 1, and doesn't this imply 3x is equal to 2 pi k? And then from here, x becomes 2 pi k over 3, 4 k integers, right? But wait a minute. This doesn't work. Why? Because if k is equal to 1, for example, 2 pi over 3 is definitely not a solution. But why did it work, though? Well, it's just part of the story. If you think about the whole thing, basically, this needs to be 1, this needs to be 1, and this needs to be 1 all at the same time. So actually, if this is 1, these are also going to be 1, because if x is 2 pi, this is going to be 4 pi, this is going to be 6 pi, which are already multiples of 2 pi, because multiples of 2 pi are multiples of 2 pi. Make sense? I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up with that. The graph is pretty interesting, because it kind of has its peaks, you know, and the maximum it can be is 3, and that happens at 0 or 2 pi or negative 2 pi, as you can see, multiples of 2 pi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.